Welcome to the ODP Project. You're with your host, Stephen Jeff. G'day, Steve-O. How are you? It's good, mate. Today we're talking about nootropics. Now, yes. we're going to go through functions in the brain, including cognitive decline, how to enhance your, your cognition, your mental clarity, your mental function. We're going to be talking about sleep. We're going to be talking about age-related diseases. We're going to be talking about um, nutrition. We're going to be talking about exercise. We, and what's really cool is we're going to be talking about some of the most powerful nootropic enhancing herbs that you can take to improve your performance. So we've got a lot of ground to cover, Steve. Oh, no. Lots in here. Um, but yeah, whether you're concerned about your mental health as you're aging or whether you want to study or perform sport at your best, I think this podcast is going to be for you. It's going to be fun. Let's get into it. All right. Um, but Steve, where do you want to drive this bus? Well, I want to start in back in 1972. Okay. <laughs> That's when the term eutrophics was, was, was introduced. Really? Very first one. Yeah. It's, it's a Greek word meaning, um, uh, nos meaning mind and, uh, trophon to mean to monitor. Oh. So you monitor your mind. Okay. And a nootropic is that that's the technical word for it. But it was it was it was first coined in nineteen seventy two. Wow. By Dr. Gugier. Dr. So, Gugier. Easy Gugier. for you to say. Yeah, so, yeah. So tell me tell, Greek, but tell, tell me about this, Steve. How do we how do we increase or why does it decline? I mean, we, I know yeah. with age and you've yeah. got things, disease states mm. like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but Alzheimer's, Parkinson's is more of a motor neuron, whereas, whereas Alzheimer's can affect obviously cognitive function. And it can affect the global brain. The The Parkinson's disease typically affects one part of the brain called the substantia nigra, right. which is the, a, a darkened cell area where there's a, dopamine is produced. Mm. And dopamine is involved in, yes, thought, and we're going to talk about that today, but it's also involved in, in fine motor movement. So what, mm. what they do is this, this, this decline. So if I want to pick up this pen, dopamine is regulated and it does it slowly. If you've got Parkinson's, yep. you know, we've all seen the uh, Michael, well, Michael J. Fox. J. Fox. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's he's yeah. terrible now. And, yeah. um, and, and it just means, but at the start, they have the tremors. Mm. And the, the tremors means that they're, they're holding their hand still, but there's not enough dopamine to regulate that fluid movement that we can do with our hands. Wow. So it's, it's a weird type of brain disease. Now, now, Alzheimer's is another global type of disease, and it's caused by a really mystery. It's like it could be plaques in the brain, right. beta amyloid plaques, which yep. are just like plaques. It could be caused by diabetes. Yep. And we did a podcast on type 3 diabetes, mm. like Alzheimer's, in brain. So insulin yeah. resistance. Mm. But it's certainly a defect in energy functions in the brain. And we know that there's things that prevent it, and there's things that uh, we, we know now the process of it. They just get lower levels of acetylcholine in the brain, right? And so there's the smart drugs now to mitigate those effects to, inc to increase acetylcholine, which is the main neurotransmitter you hear a lot about today that is involved in memory formation. Well, my understanding and my very rudimentary understanding of how to enhance cognitive function, nootropics, is yeah. things like tyrosine, is <laughs> things like hoopazine. Yep. Um, I think ginkgo as yep. well too can That's also help as well too. Yeah. You've got brahmi, you've yep. got theobromine, yes. uh, which is found in chocolate and red yes. wine, which is why I think we're attracted to these things. So surely there's got to be some biochemical traps um, or enhancements that we can do to to help when you're studying. If you just want to keep your mind fit, mm. um, I've heard video games can help. Yes, they can. Um, that, which, so video games yep. are not all bad, right? No, I mean, not my mum was playing these games on her iPad, which her doctor recommended to her, which were problem solving brains to keep her mind sharp. My mother so, does that too. Does she? She's um she's doing. She, she, tell, tell her give me a call. We'll hook up and we'll play Elden Ring together online. Right? <laughs> yeah, I've never even heard of you that. You should love it. Oh, okay. Yeah, lots of weird stuff. So yeah. this is a 79-year-old designing... Um, She'll be throwing her controller at the TV, yeah. <laughs> like me. No, I don't, actually. But, yes, yeah, it's a very frustrating but, game. Yeah, she plays a game every day, and I think it's very good for her. She's yep. gardening. She's very mentally healthy. I saw my dad, and he's mid-80s. Yep. So, so um, you know, there is... And it's sad because then, like my grandmother on the other side, I remember her 70th birthday and she was starting to decline then and she eventually died of Alzheimer's, very severe. Yeah, yeah. Like very, so, so you know, pr protecting your brain. Yeah. And, and, and out there we've got people who are constantly looking after their cardiovascular system, they're eating well, they're yep. living well, and they don't give a stuff about, well, they give stuff, but they, they don't naturally focus on the brain. And, and so today we're going to talk about a lot of studies that can help the brain Long term. Steve, can you also talk to me about environmental factors? Um, obviously, there's not a lot that you can do. You can protect against, yeah. um, um, you know, genetic, mm. you know, issues, weaknesses, yeah. um, you know, 
grandparents, oh, you know, mm. great grandparents had Alzheimer's yep. and then, you know, grandparents got Alzheimer's and then parents got Alzheimer's. I mean, what you can do for those people who are at risk or mm. have got higher, you know, chance of development. What about environmental factors, things like aluminium and other things like there that, is. which there's a lot of research coming out, which has been known for a long time, yeah, but it is a concern. Mm. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's part of the reason why I drink, I drink um, non, I uh, drink, spring water because I don't want aluminium. Um, yes. What else, Steve? I, I mean, uh, uh, you know, and then the herbs that you can take to help, mental exercises mm. that you can do, sleep, uh, you know, things that you can do, exercise. I mean, where does it all, what, what are oh. the most important things to do? What are the most important things to avoid? Um, mm. Yeah. And, and also that's from a disease state, but then what about performing as an athlete? What about reaction to, what about, what about studying? What about what about that side of it as well, too, as far as the performance enhancing well well being sort of side? Yeah, there's two main splits off here. There's protecting your brain from disease. Yep. And then there's enhancing the brain. Yep. Today well, there's a lot about enhancing, but we can talk about pr- protecting the brain. There's three main factors to protect the brain. Okay. First thing is get your diet right. You'll learn here that simple carbohydrates are horrendously bad for your brain. Yeah. As they are for the heart. I mean, and again, we speak about yep. you know, cholesterol, right? Yep. I mean, and, and the overabundance of sugars is what, you know, basically builds up that plaque, as you yes. were saying before. In the, sure. uh, so is that the same thing for the brain? Same thing for the brain. Cholesterol is good for the brain. Yes. Very good for the Very brain. Very good, yeah. Um, so so sugar is, remember, type 3 diabetes is sugar uh, insulin resistance in the brain, mm. and that's one of the main driving factors for Alzheimer's disease. So I've heard them say a lot that fish is really good for the brain. Is that because of the omega oils? Now, yeah, we yeah. talk a lot about omega-3. Yeah. But there's also five and seven as well too. Oh yeah, do you Any know? Odd number ones are good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so if you think of the monounsaturated, which is omega nine, yeah, uh, omega seven and omega five, yeah, like prunic acid and omega threes. So they're very, very good for the brain. Yeah. Any of the odd number ones, and 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 so if you if you're wanting a good essential oil, now you got to remember a lot of people focus on the fish oils, the EPA and DHA. Sure. They're well, omega threes, but they're made from alpha linolenic acid, mm-hmm. which is a great vegan vegetarian source, your body can then make the all yeah. the other acids. And we endorse that. So, yeah. I mean, we like not just omega-3, but 5, 6, 7, and yep. 9 as well too, mm. but we like them from plant-based sources as well too. So if you've got an omega-based supplement, yeah. maybe consider switching over to a plant-based omega supplement instead. But anyway, just... Just for the, just on the side, just yeah. on the sidebar. So in terms, um, okay. So so we know that to potentially avoid carbohydrate or over high carbohydrate consumption, yep. to get omegas in, which is obviously going to be what else, Steve? Well, there's there's actually a study that I'll I'll, I'll read the title for, which talks about the uh, macronutrient intakes and the impact of. Uh, cognition on the brain, and that was published um, in 2021. So it actually reviews all this stuff. So I've mentioned the uh, uh, the the fats, the sugars. Yep. Fiber is Fiber. extremely good for your brain. Because I thought you were going to go down the whole keto ketogenic oh, right and, 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 and blood ketones, but you're going fiber I'm first. I'm going fiber. I'm starting okay. with carbohydrates. Yeah. What type Sh- of fiber? Soluble or insoluble? Soluble fiber. Soluble very, fiber. Very very good. So for high it. in apple, pectin, yep. that sort of stuff. Yep. yep. Now, great for your bowel and all the other sure. heart. Who gives a stuff about that today? Yeah. We're talking about the brain. Very, very good for the brain. Now, everyone thinks, how does that work? Well, yeah. think think about what, what's made when you eat um, a soluble fibers that make short-chain fatty acids. Yeah, butyrate. Yeah, butyrate's one of them yeah. and acetates and all the others. Yeah. Uh, so, but the other advantage is you've got to remember there is this very strong link between the gut and the brain because most of the neurotransmitters oh, yeah. are made in your gut. Yep. Like serotonin. Yep. 95% is made in your gut. So, you know, if you haven't got a healthy gut, you haven't got a healthy brain. There's no ifs or buts about it. So, of course, very good. Now, what the or studies coconuts. show. Sorry? So if, no, it's buts or coconuts. Sorry. You know, That's you exactly can... right. Well, yeah. we're going to talk about coconuts later. Oh. Too. <laughs> nice segue. Great hey? segue. Or palm oil, anyway. Oh, not the ones that kill, kill the orangutans. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. you've got to watch out where you get your palm oil from. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely, you do. So, so we know fiber is great for successful aging, memory, and reduces cognitive decline. Wow. Okay. Um, monounsaturated fatty acids like the omega nines, uh, yep. like olive oil. Because I mean, an omega nines are considered to be evil and bad and all yep. the rest of it. Because typically we get an overabundance because yep. we are eating significantly high amounts of red meat as opposed to fish and other things that have got higher. What are, what are some other things that are really good in threes? Nuts. 
Oh, threes. Threes is six, isn't it? Three, six is high in nuts and yeah. threes are high in like walnuts. Walnuts, yeah. yeah which, and and funnily enough, if we go to Doctrine of Signatures, like if you look brain. at – and I love this Doctrine of oh. Signatures. Oh, Any time I get a chance to talk about it. Yeah. If you look at a walnut, what does it look like? Yeah. It looks your like testes. Brain. I mean, no, your brain. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> actually, if you, so, don't, if you don't hull them, they look like your testes a bit, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do actually. Yeah. Well, not mine. A smaller version. But, yes, I know what you're saying, Steve. But, yes, that's true, though. When you open up a walnut, it looks like a brain. It, it is It is fat. I love this Doctrine of Signatures thing. It's just the coolest. Steve. Yes. We shall not bow to any corporate sponsor. <laughs> no, <laughs> not only one. I always say that. I mean, I love that movie, Wayne's World. It just cracks me up. But right, we yeah. do have something exciting that we want to share with people. It's got something inside in front of you right uh, now. It's funny, actually. For people that follow me on LinkedIn, I actually wrote a little post on this bar and the sort of the journey that the last five years have had, but the the inception of the idea actually started 20 years ago, and that is our marshmallow bar. And it was just a way to bring quality protein Mm. to the market that didn't have you know, artificial colours and flavours in there that was as natural as we could possibly make it. Yep. Um, you know, we, we're using collagen. It's whipped like a marshmallow. It's mm. nice to taste. My kids fight over having this in the lunchbox. Oh, yeah. um, it's got natural chocolate. It's yep. using, you know, Delta stevia chocolate. and erythritol and all yep. natural non nutritive sweeteners mm-hmm. in there. But, yeah, really proud of this one. And, it, look, it's available at all good sports specialty retailers. Yep. Um, some gyms have got on board and have got it as well too, so you can see in their scoff boxes there. Yep. And it's also available in Australia at Woolworths. Now, we're trying to get it out through the rest of the globe, but because we um, have have really tried not to go too artificial with this product, mm. um, it doesn't have the preservatives that um, maintain the shelf life past seven months at the moment, yeah. so we can't really do that. But, look, if you're looking for a little treat in between, mm. looking to get a fun way to impress your protein, yep. you know, something maybe for your, your, your kid's school lunchbox, after dinner, instead of reaching for a chocolate bar or something really, you know, that's that's you know got no no real benefit for you. We call these a better for you snack. Yeah, that's true. And so they're full of gluten, are they? No. Oh, oh, what about dairy? No. Any nuts in there? No. Oh my goodness, it's low in protein, then, isn't it? Uh, Fourteen grams, Steve. <laughs> amazing. Huh? And and but bro, look. All, it's extraordinarily healthy, but the flavours are beautiful. They're, 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 they are like a marshmallow. Well, it comes in three flavours. You've got you've got birthday cake, mm-hmm. um, you've got vanilla, yeah. and I think probably the most popular flavour, yeah. strawberry. Re- oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're working on some other flavours as we speak as well too. But look, guys, enough of the flog. I appreciate this is not why you're here, <laughs> but this is what keeps oh, Steve and I... Yes. Yeah, this is what keeps Steve and I off the streets. Yes. Um, but, guys, you know, give them a try. Have a look. Um, they're a better for you sort of fun way to have some protein. As I said, great for, for maybe, you know, after dinner if you're looking for something a little bit different and excite your day. Beautiful. Yep. Way off track. Yeah. All right, so monounsaturated fatty acids. So they're, they're the ones with this one, not poly, but just monounsaturated fats, omega-9, olive oils, the common one. Yep. It's very, very good for your brain. Right. Very, very good. And it's good for your heart. And other crap. You'll find that, that what's good for the brain is good for the body as well. Yeah. Um, certain polyunsaturated fats are very good for the brain. A lot of people think, oh, yeah, that's that's too weird, too many. That's, that's fine. What's, what's what, okay, some food that's got polyunsaturated oh, fats? Oh, um, nuts and seeds. Okay. So, yep. again, lots of nuts and seeds, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you get the bad. Like pumpkin seeds. I mean, yep. I love pumpkin seeds. Oh, they're, they're very fantastic. good. Good for yeah. your prostate too. I know that. That's they're what we were thinking really about. Really good. Nuts before I was thinking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And cool. really cool. good with zinc and that as well too. Should so. we do a seminar on, uh, should we do a podcast on testicles one day? <laughs> Nobody's going to be interested in that, <laughs> Steve. I mean, Nick, it's hard to, no, no. Yes, we can, I guess. Yes. <laughs> it's just, there's a topic. It's very interesting. Very interesting part of the body. Um, all right. So trans fats. Now, the shock horror. There's so many studies on trans fats being bad for your brain. It's Which, n- oh, found, found in lots of potato chips. Potato chips. Yeah, um, really bad in baked trans. Baked goods. Yeah. All the junk food. Yeah. You know, all the junk food, lots of margarines. So any of Margarine is not food, is it? It's yeah. weird. It's shocking. Because trans fat is when, and I won't go to the biochemistry, but it's when it gets twisted up and you pump a lot of hydrogen gas through uh, polyunsaturated fat. So it essentially saturates it. And turns it solid, and that's what margarine is. How do, so is it? Is it hydrogenated? Hydrogenated vegetable oil. Yes, and and it's funny actually because we're going to talk about this um, in another podcast down the road. But reading a label, oh. some things 
are bad, some things sound bad. Yeah. And, and, and the difference between the two, and this is the, the things, and some things are acceptable and things that some things are not acceptable. And it's actually, and it's, <laughs> this is where I hate and love TikTok, right? Because yes. there's so many TikTok experts out there that do a little dance and people go, oh my gosh, that's so true. You know what, Steve? We should be out there like dancing monkeys, giving people real advice as opposed to these influences that sort of tell partial truths oh, no, it, oh, and, and I think they believe what they're saying is true, but I think they're just trying to be trendy, literally. Yeah. And trend is the friend as far yeah. as information is concerned. I mean, uh, but it's not actually. Margarine is, is marketed beautifully. I've got to give them that. I mean, it's terrible for you, but it's marketed beautifully. It's a vegan source, right? Firstly. Right. Okay. It contains, they added beta cytosterol in there. So it reduces cholesterol absorption. Right. That's what it does. Yeah. I know the one you're and, talking and about. That market full of polyunsaturated says. fats. Right. But that sounds good, doesn't it? And it does actually. I mean, that, that we're going to talk about that in our labeling podcast. But what's but funny though, is that they have to color something to make you want to eat it. Yeah. Like it's gray, isn't it? And color. And then oh, they, yeah. yeah it's, it's weird. You got to make it look like butter so they yellow it up. Yeah. Funny that, right? It's like, it's like Tartres not dogs and, and they fashion gluten just, into the form of a sausage. Just <laughs> it's like meat worship. I know. Terrible. Mm. Speaking of meats, cholesterol. Mm. Yes. Very good for your brain. Right. Very good. It is a neurotransmitter. Yeah. And you know what the number one drug sold in Australia is? Neurotransmitters? No, drug, anti-cholesterol drugs. Statins. Ah, I was going to say. So one of the side effects of a statin is you get a, oh, a brain problem. And we know statins. Oof. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about them before, but that's a side effect of them. Okay. So if you've got good cholesterol levels, so so a lot of people and, and doctors and, and my father-in-law, who's a doctor, he said when he was practicing, if you got above six, that's when you started to Yeah, treat. I remember this. So they say yeah. go get your cholesterol tested and yeah. you have to cut out eggs. Yeah. The first thing they did was, right, eggs are eggs. evil, no eggs. Yeah, it's yeah. like, really? Oh. And then it went to 5.5, then it went to five, now it's four. Wow. Yeah. And, and he's going, hang on a minute. What's going This is like, this is, remember, got to remember, cholesterol is mostly made in your body. Yeah. It's not, it's not like some evil egg thing. About 80% of it's made in your body. Right. So your liver's, what, doing a stupid job making cholesterol killing us? Yeah, because we're eating too many simple carbohydrates. Yeah. Well, if, if we eat too many simple carbohydrates, that, that exacerbates the pathology of, of cholesterol. So yeah. if you're eating cholesterol foods, there's no problem. That's right. It's not the problem. I it know. is really, it's good for your brain. Isn't it funny that even in today's day and age, in 2023, yep. here we are explaining the basic concepts of sound nutrition and health that we've yeah. known for thousands of years, but yet now we've got a smoking gun and gone, ah, cholesterol's bad. If you eat cholesterol, that's the problem. It's like, no, I actually, know. it's not. It's a scientific um, fallacy. We, we, uh, if you heard of causation and correlation, correlation, yes, correlation doesn't mean causation. That's right. And we fell for that with all, so many oh, things in medicine. It's, it's easy. Science. Well, yeah. not only that. I mean, you see it everywhere. Propaganda utilizes that extremely well. Yeah. So whenever you're being lied to, you'll see correlation and causation being interchanged. Yep. Ah, this is the smoking gun. This yep. is the reason why something has yep. happened. Um, and, and look, people do it for whatever uh, profit or whatever thing they're trying to sell. Um, and, and this is where you've got to look at the research and go, have they got an, have they got an, a hidden agenda? Yeah, yeah exactly. Anyway, anyway. It's sort of like, um, you know, is pumping pollution in the air bad for your health or good for your health? Now, you can, now I'm just giving you a scientific thing. We would say it's bad for your health. But I said, aha, since the Industrial Revolution, we've been pumping all sorts of crap into the atmosphere, a lot, uh, age extension has gone from average of 47 up to 80. Right. So it's good. That, that's a correlation and causation. Yes, I know what you see saying. what I mean? Yes, I do. It correlates. Yep. It doesn't, it doesn't mean causation. That's true. So, so it's very, During very the, uh, before the industrial is, yep. re- oh, it was, was it only 47. Kid. Yes. Yeah. It was only, for, no, turn, it was turn of the century is 47. Really? Oh, sorry. The, the, the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, like 1799 to 1800. Yeah. It, it was 47, 47. years. 47. Wow. Well, you know, a lot of people died of childbirth. That's true. And that's so true. that just dropped the averages yeah. a bit. Once you got a bit, but, but, you know, people were dropping dead and you didn't know why. No. Infections were rampant. Yeah. Antibiotics weren't even around until 1926. Yeah. Um, so, so people would get a simple blood bacterial infection and croak it. Yeah. Kidney infection, croak it. Yeah. So, uh, and, and also there was, you know, medicine was a mess. You know, the surgery was, was diabolical. <laughs> and, you know, it's like they didn't know the effects of radiation. 
Um, you know, um, it, this wasn't. This was dis- all discovered in the 20th century. So, you know, that, that was just a black lung. I mean, yeah. like all sorts of stuff, right? Like people would, kids would be down there mining coal and yeah. stuff. and because you'd have a cough and it's like, oh, well, man up, you know, you got a cough. They didn't know that. And, of course, there was no regulations on anything. And, and I'm not saying regulations to save you, but a little bit of regulation was okay back oh, then. Look, I think for the most part, this is the problem, though. The pendulum sometimes goes too far the other way. But, yeah, yeah. interesting. 47. There you 47. go. All right, Steve, what else? All right. Right, so protein, mm. uh, the last of the macronutrients. If you now they, they they call adequate consumption of protein two grams per kilogram, which a lot of people Hang on, think that's is what high. bodybuilders say. Yeah, I know. So they yeah. so based on that study, but if you for the average person, I'm talking the layout there, yeah. they say I think you correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but like 0.6 to 1.2, I think, yeah. is sort of the, the sort of what they say. That's it. And so these, in these studies, they tested two as being adequate. And they wow. found if you have adequate consumption, it increased fluid intelligence, increased working memory, increased memory, and increased uh, global global cognition. Is that because of the amino acids of found course. in meat? Yeah, amino acids, like you mentioned tyrosine before. Sure. That is the building block for dopamine. Right. You know, so most neurotransmitters are made from amino acids. Yeah. So if you're not having enough of them or too many of them, um, then there's problems. And mm-hmm. that's what the study goes and it goes to show. So <clears throat> if you're having um, tryptophan, that makes serotonin. Yep. So you, you can easily under-eat protein because you can over-consume simple carbohydrates. Like and I think that's certainly been a trend, isn't it? I mean, oh, as yeah. far as over the last few years, mm. you know, in modern society, I'm talking the last 40, 50 years, carbohydrates is tasty, convenient, mm. cheap, yep. easily, um, you know, purported around, doesn't need refrigeration. Yep. We, we do, we do. We're, we're very much a, um, a grain-based society, more so than ever before, you know. No, oh, it's a fascinating story with that. But I think we've talked about before on podcasts about how grains became the number one food for humans. You know, when when it was recommended six to 11 servings a day, you remember the old pyramid thing and proteins was up the list a bit. So, so unfortunately, um, you know, we are now consuming all these grains because again, low in fat, cheap, convenient, tastes good, all that sort of stuff. So storage is good. It was a terrible story. And and now we know that those simple carbohydrates reduce global cognition. Well, there you go. So it's so like, we are becoming dumber. And again, you've got to watch the movie Idiocracy because yeah. this is what it predicted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we're also knowing that, that there are certain and, – and you've got to remember that there's people who are out there that have said, oh, but my grandfather, the classic one, he smoked till he was 90 and didn't get lung cancer. And there's genes involved there. So in, in the brain, there's a gene called the apolipoprotein E4 gene. Easy for me to say. Mm. Now, the, um, you know Chris Hemsworth? I, I, Thor, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got that gene. Does he? It's in, I've seen it in magazines, so right, okay. I'm not giving away any secrets. Right. Um, so so he is at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Right. Um, and so it doesn't mean he'll get it. No. But it's like 11 but times. Fit. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's using his, his ATP science, you know, supplements. So <laughs> I don't know. Mate. Maybe, maybe. That's, that may or may not be true. He, he lives down Byron Bay, doesn't he? Yeah, should he does. drop in and say good day. We and should offer him free tub or something. No, he can pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing all right, isn't he? Yeah. That's right. He doesn't need any free stuff. No. Yeah. No, no. I mean, he is, uh, uh, well, you know, he's, he's I, I don't know, but I'm assuming he's super healthy. I've seen videos. Yeah, he looks, on, it. He looks, yeah, he looks, yeah. he looks almost as buff as I do, which is probably not. Nah. Nah. So there you go. So you got, you got to watch us on YouTube, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, <laughs> No, Stephen. don't, because you'll see that I'm uh, lying. Yeah, you big fat uh, Oh, dear. Right, so then in terms of what about, where do you want to go now, Steve? Do you want Look, to talk about in, improving? Because, yep. I mean, we've spoken a lot about disease, yep. nutrition. Yep. You know, yeah. So now do you want to talk about increasing performance and yep. and cognitive dissonance? No, <laughs> cognitive <laughs> clarity and the yep. ability to problem solve yep. and the ability to, to – because I always think of nootropics as something that almost makes you feel high and, you know, really good yeah. and, and alert. So. Well, we, we can talk about that and, then, and there's a whole paper here on um, herbal medicines – um, and nootropics, which are the, so they, they, they go on forever, so I won't read all of them out. Okay. But, but what, are, what are some of the most impactful ingredients, Steve? The ones that you think are, yeah. I mean, we know that tyrosine is absolutely essential, but it might oh, yeah. not be the sexiest, right? So, yeah. do you, because if, if the tyrosine's missing or if you're mm. very low on tyrosine, then you can take all the sexy stuff mm. like hoopazine, let's just say, mm. and that might not be as sexy as what people think it is. But, it won't work as effectively if you just, if you don't have the, the the tyrosine. Correct. Now, tyrosine's found almost in all proteins. So, if you're having two grams, 
peculiar protein or thereabouts, then your brain's going to be probably supplied with these uh, amino acids enough. So we'll, we'll start there. Um, so you're probably going to be having enough of those. But if you're not, you can supplement with a few of these. Yep. Um, if you're a non-meat eater, you may want to supplement with like carnitine because that's high in meats, particularly meats, not not so much vegan sources. Now, your body can make carnitine, but it doesn't make a lot of it. Right. So you may want to, you know, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you may want to look at supplementing with those yep. if you wanted to. Uh, but B12 is the kicker for, for vegans. Okay. Now, now B12, and I won't bore you with the biochemistry, but you remember homocysteine? Yes. Nasty thing, yeah. right? Yeah, for clots. your brain. Yeah. yeah. Clots, brain, yep. strokes. Methionine is one of the problems, right? The sulfur-based aminos. Correct. Yeah. And they're high in vegan sources. Right. Now, what, what normally happens is if you get B12, you add a, a methyl group yep. to this homocysteine and it turns it back to harmless methionine. Wow, there you go. So it, it's a good one. Yeah. So it's in the call, it's called the SAM cycle. Right. Um, so that's very that's important. S-A-M-E? Yeah, SAMI. SAMI. Yeah. S-adenosyl methionine. Yeah. That's the cycle. Yep. So sorry to get nerdy in. No, that's good. But that's good. So, so B12 is highly important, but it's only found in animal sources. Right. So you really need something with B12, particularly methyl B12. Mm-hmm. Very, very good for your brain. What is it found in the nature then, Steve, in terms of natural non-meat sources? What, what is it found in? Because, oh, there was because a, surely there's, there was a there's, moss. There's a moss? Yes. Is it a moss? Yeah, there was some sure? sort of fungusy thing. It was a weird fungusy thing, which is – funguses are more like animals than our plants anyway. Right. So it's a weird, but it's very, very rare to eat that sort of thing. That, that was in bee mushrooms, but not really sourced oh, yeah. too much. So okay. it's mainly animal foods that B12. So how did, how did the vegetarians and that are the thousands of years ago, how did they survive? Well, they they made, uh, they, they there wasn't many vegetarians many years ago because they were mainly hunters and gatherers that eat anything. They can mm-hmm. find. So it's very interesting. But but B12 is a, is, a, is a trap one because animals can make it. Mm-hmm. Some animals can. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, Humans can't. Yeah, we, we, we don't make it. We, we, we typically, when you hear the word vitamin, we really don't make much of it or enough of it. Yeah. You can make it in the microbiome mm-hmm. a little bit, yeah. but it doesn't get absorbed down there. Ah. So it's absorbed in the ileum higher up. Right. So we make it and poop it out. So... It's just because the microbes make B12. They make all sorts of goodies that we don't access. Mm. Um, so very interesting. So, you know, if you be, if, if you are, you know, you can get B12 levels checked, you can get home assistant levels checked. So if you're worried, you can get it checked through your doctor. Sure. Or just something B12. It's quite safe. All right. So tyrosine and B12 yep. as far as, I guess, making sure as a baseline. Yeah, baseline. Is there anything else baseline that you need to have? Well, for the brain, there's loads of B vitamins for the brain. Sure, they're all good, um, B3, they're B6. They're good. Yep. Um, vitamin but, D is very good for the brain. Okay. Vitamin E is extremely beneficial for the, ba- for the brain. Okay. So, so it's, you know, let, let's assume that everyone's eating a healthy okay. diet. Let, let's try and... What are the sexy herbs? Give me something sexy, sexy yeah, okay. Give me something, right. What know. about gotu cola? Gotu cola. Yeah. Hey, how do you say it? Oh, got who cola? Got who cola. That's yeah. probably correct. I always yeah. called it gotcha cola because they're kind of, oh, that's gotcha. how I remember it. Yeah, got gotcha. Or cola. Centali- a- Asiatica, the yeah. Latin name. But, okay. What but, is that? Um, it's a herb um, that's found throughout mainly Asian areas. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's an extremely beneficial one for the brain. Okay. Really good one. So the herb has been used for conditions traditionally. You're going to love this, this resume. Um, cancer, wound healing, dementia. Diabetes, skin problems, ulcers, regenerating the brain and nerves. Regenerating the brain. Regenerating the brain. Wow, and that nerves. sounds good. It's for combating aging and asthma. Wow. I mean, wow. But there have been studies on it in children. Yeah. What does it do for children? It makes them smarter. What? Yep. Makes makes their memory improve dramatically. Really? Yeah. So it helps with recall. Yes. And it does that by inhibiting the breakdown of that acetylcholine stuff that we talked about before. Right. That, that's, the, that's the chemical in the brain that helps you form memories through the hippocampus. Yeah, right. So if your memories are fading, you may not have enough acetylcholine. Right. And acetylcholine gets made and broken down all the time. But if you inhibit the breakdown of it, you end up with more of it and you become smarter. Okay. And more memory. So, so this would be in your top five, Steve. Of very much so, especially if you're yeah. you're looking, you're a young person looking to study, yep, or you're an elderly elderly person looking to not decline mentally. Correct. Okay, it's a good one for kids and elderly. There was a study done in 2014, and it showed it was is beneficial for Parkinson's disease. So it's one of the only rare ones that's Parkinson's. Yeah, which really? is dopaminergic. Yeah. So wow. So help. does it help to relieve some of the tremors? Yeah. Wow. That's what it showed. By how much did it say? It didn't say how much. It was just like it just helped it. Okay. So, yeah, they didn't go into much detail there. 
Okay. Now I've got another sexy one for you. Yeah. That, that, I like the way he says that. That you're going to think is for a different reason, or most people take it for a different reason, right. but it's extremely good for your brain. Lay it on me. Yerba mate. Ah, yerba mate, which is a South American, um, like almost like a green, South American green tea, I'd almost say. So it's it's a herb. Yep. They, they have it through a pipe. Yep. Very good for weight loss. Very um, good for weight it, loss. It's got, it's got mild amounts of caffeine in there as it well. It does, too. yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't. Uh, hang on. It, yes, because it helps with insulin sensitivity. It does. Um, and very, very good for the brain. Uh, do, you, do you want to read me yeah, the how? I don't know how it's good for the brain. It, I mean, other than the insulin sensitivity part. Yeah, which is good for the brain. Yeah, but um, how? How does right. it work? This is its region, mate. You're going to love this. This was published in 2017, this paper. Polyphenols, obviously. Yeah, but, polyphenols. Yeah, yeah. I've got to talk about them for the brain later too. Yeah. Uh, it's neuroprotective, diuretic, um, anti-hyperglycemic, so blood sugar levels. Yeah, yeah. It's an anti-depressant, anti-convulsant. Um, it's an antifungal and an anti-obesity. I didn't know it was antifungal either. I know. It's like this is really good. Well, now, well, now what they did was they 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 did they gave they gave this herb to animals. Now animals are good to test for this sort of stuff. Yeah. And they put them in maze tests. So yeah, rats yeah. can. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but does it work in humans? It does. Because they've tested in humans as well. They put them in a big maze? (laughs) Well, well, you got to remember for a rat to get out of a maze, it's got to remember which way to go. So it's not that way, it's that way. Like when we came up here today, we knew the way up. Yeah. Because we've done it a million times. If if, if you can remember that, Mm -hmm. then you'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. And that's what rats do. They put them through this test and they can test it on numerous rats at a time. Wow. So you can reproduce the results. Okay. So it shows absolutely beneficial. So so the function then, how, 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 how? You're going to love this. Yeah. It boosts, guess what? Acetylcholine. Oh, acetylcholine. Okay. Yep. Very good. Really? Yep. I love it. It's very interesting too. Huh. There is another way they, they test in animals, and I'll talk about it later, is they give them a, a chemical that, that stuffs your memory up, and it stuffs your memory up in humans too. It's probably one of the most commonly taken agents that, that – well, Don't of them say all, paracetamol. No. No. It's a prescription uh, drug. Oh. Um, like, like let's say you needed to relax and you wanted a prescription drug for that. Um, uh, v, 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 yep. v. Starts with V. Oh, not ends, I was in, ends say. in allium. Valium. Yeah. <laughs> ends in allium. I, he's, so, he's so good. I knew that. Um, but yeah, I was going to say Vicodin. I'm like, stop oh, Vicodin. Stop, Vicodin. Stop Vicodin. No, uh, it's, it's Valium. Yes, Vicodin. Valium. Valium. Really? So yeah. that's stuff. Because, right. And then everyone, you know, Valium's everywhere. And Valium is two to five milligrams, depending on the dose. But it's got a long half life and it screws with your memory. Wow. And so what they I do. I didn't is, know that. Yeah, they, they give it to animals to screw with their memory, huh. and then they give them Sabiyuva Mardes and a few other herbs we're going to talk about, and it reverses it. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So you've got to give the the rats, the rats amnesia. So they give them a drug, Valium, and it screws with it. And you've got to remember that any benzodiazepine causes amnesia. So benzos right. are usually used for sleeping aids. Right, right. Um, so if you, if you take one and you sleep really well, you go, oh, God, just woke up. I can't remember a thing. A lot of the time it's amnesia. It's just you can't remember waking up. Really? Yeah, and this is where this whole still knocks or Ambien problem uh-huh. came from in America where there was quite a few famous people on Ambien and they went yeah. sleepwalking and couldn't remember. I remember someone remember. did a plane and I think yeah. didn't some of the Olympic team get yeah. in trouble with the still oh, knocks? They, they, they took still knocks with um, w- which Red Bull. Oh, with caffeine. I was going <laughs> to say, you know, they were sort of oh, well, just screwing went, your brain. Weird. Yeah. Wow. And, and um, you know, unfortunately, Grant Hackett got addicted to it. And, and this is public. Right, right, right. And right. I disclosure, I know Grant, didn't, oh, I haven't seen him for 20, 30 years, but I knew him well a few many years ago. But but he was, um, you know, that, that was a tragic story because benzos were also highly addictive. That's right. Yeah. I, I was thinking he was a swimmer, right? Very good he, swimmer. O- always, always playing bridesmaid to, to Perkins, wasn't he it? He does. And then he, um, then he beat him. He did. Yeah. He did beat him. He, he, he won did. a gold medal. And he, he did. He's, he's a, yeah, he's he good, good there. guy. He good guy. Good, great guy. Really yeah. great guy. Family on the Gold Coast. Yep. Um, brother Craig um, was an Iron Man on yep. the Gold Coast. Um, and he actually, Grant's a good guitarist, too. Yeah. So there you go. Just useless information for people out there. Yeah. Um, but, but interestingly, those drugs are very uh, 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 everywhere 
And there's people who are taking, you know, like like these drugs, and they're not remembering a damn thing, and they're they're getting up and and, and I've got a story. Of, <laughs> my wife's a nurse, and she works with someone who's a security guard. I won't mention their name. Sure. But they they took um, still knocks. Yeah. And woke up and ordered all this stuff online <gasps> and didn't remember. Wow. Yeah. She's, I've heard of worse stories. Yeah, I know. I've heard of know, well, well, inappropriate actually, behavior taking still knocks, right? She she did do some inappropriate, not sexual, but she did do some inappropriate Beck. behavior with. No, not oh, Beck. Okay. Beck's friend. I was going to say. I won't mention. Not that you don't. Not that you don't know about anything. Yeah, nothing. Right, let's go. All right, here's another one for you. Yep, it's good for everything. It's almost in every single podcast, but it is panic stinting. Yep. Panics. Cool. Great. Ginseng's great. 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 Now, the big problem with ginseng, yep. um, panics, there's so many fakes out there, oh. Steve-O, and this is the problem. This yeah. is where you've got really, really cool, cool, powerful herbs that are bloody awesome, yeah. and people go, oh, I took Panax and it didn't do anything. Yeah. Well, there could be a chance that you could be a non-responder, 100%, and that could have to do with gut microbiome mm. that mm. could have to do with your genetic part, whatever right i mean and steve i'm not an expert on that i'm just mm. saying there yeah, could be yeah. there could be reasons why you could take it and you not respond to it you could be missing something in your body that you need like we spoke about before with yep. b vitamins yep. b12 and and tyrosine to help things work because if things are missing in your body then sometimes you know there's no spark in the spark plus so to speak yeah. but but the overwhelming majority of time, I reckon why people don't get good results from panax gene singers because they've probably bought chinese sawdust because it's a little bit expensive isn't it's it it's very expensive and and i mean there's different types there's siberian yeah. ginseng there's mm. korean ginseng there's all sorts of different ginsengs right and they're all really cool they're and great, they work yeah. and they work differently but tell us about if you actually get panax what it does how it works all right the way it works is remember how we're, we're slowing down the breaking down of acetylcholine which is the gold memory thing in the brain well this actually enhances the choline uptake which is a natural chemical found in food into the brain. Wow. So it helps you build your colon lift. So it's a really interesting mechanism. So you'll find, you know, panic ginseng with other agents as because one builds it up and the other one stops the breakdown. You end up with more of it in your brain and it works brilliantly to help with memory and wow. learning because that's the acetylcholine way. Remember, Alzheimer's is a deficiency of acetylcholine. So this is the opposite to Alzheimer's. Your brain's on fire, working great. So that's that's what panic does. Uh, look, it does all sorts of other things for the body. But what else know, does it do, Steve? Boost testosterone in men. Ow. Ow. Need that when you're 53. Um, and it's very, very good for um, enhancing your muscle mass. Mm. Yeah. So it's a very, very good one for boosting uh, natural hormones. How does it work on muscle mass, Steve? It increases testosterone levels. Yeah. So what just works on LH in the brain? or Yeah, LH in the brain. Yeah. Yeah, a few herbs do that. Okay. LH stimulates the body to make Is it as good as tribulus though? Oh, uh, it works in a different way. Okay. Yeah. So it would work good. synergistically with tribulus. Oh, beautifully. Okay. I mean, that's th- these are the, the you know, if, if you're a woman too, but mostly men mm. take this stuff because yeah. we want more testosterone. But Panax, would, would Panax, if it increases luteinizing hormone, would it help with the good production of estrogen for women? Yes. Yes. It does. It can be taken for boosting hormones in women. Yeah. Good, good to take uh, for people who are, are coming off, say, the pill. Yeah, or, or potentially perimenopausal or menopausal yep. women should. should Very much yep. so. Well, and, 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 and if you've got healthy levels of estrogen in a younger female, would you recommend taking it? Um, it depends on what for, for your brain, yes. Yes, for your brain. Um, but we know that when you give it to healthy people, it doesn't overdrive the LH That's system. the beautiful thing about yeah. it. So if you've got good levels of natural, natural estrogen, and this yeah. is what I always, people go, oh, if I take this and I'm a female, I'm going to get cellulite because they go, yeah, oh, I'm going to produce too much. No, no, because it, it works naturally with yeah. the body. If it's deficient, it'll help to bring it up. If and, not, and you've got negative feedback, it. remember, yes. in the body. Yep. If you block estrogen receptors, like uh, then that can have a problem. There are drugs that block estrogen receptors. Then that can have hormonal problems. Now, tamoxifen's one. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, Arimidex. Yep. Arimidex is, yep. blocks the production of it. Yep. Uh, clomiphen, which yeah. is a... Clomid, uh, yep. Yeah, or, or, or they call Clomid is yep. the drug name. So so those ones block things, and mm. this doesn't block anything. No, no, so, those are straight jackets. These are support. These yeah. are support. Okay, what else, Steve-O? Uh, this, this, this just goes on. For, oh, I'm going to pick some biggies now. Yeah, go on. Biggies, we're getting into it. What about licorice? Ha, huh, I love licorice. I know. Now, that great. affects the adrenals as well too, Very correct? much so. Um, I've heard that it can also screw around with your estrogen levels, Steve. But again, a, a bit of a, a fallacy there and a myth. So... Uh, I mean, licorice is cool. I mean, I remember oh, eating great. some licorice. It's like bark. Yeah. And you sort of chew it up and it's like, 
This is amazing. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, it's also good for, um, you know, antiviral and that sort of stuff. Yeah, we, yep, we yep. could go on for hours about it. But but what, what they did in this particular study, you know, love this, was they injected rats with diazepam or Valium. Right. So they got amnesia. And the ones they gave rat the, the rats the licorice to, their amnesia reversed. Wow. The other ones were still in a day. Do, does it work sleep. on the same pathways as the other or is it slightly different pathways? Slightly different pathways. Okay. So, it will, again, one. it would be synergistic. Yes, because it works on what they call mineral uh, channel blockers, like like calcium channel blockers. Right, right. Yeah. So, so um, when calcium goes into a cell, it activates it. Okay. So, any cell in the body. Yeah. Muscle, That's why magnesium's great. Yeah. Magnesium regulates that as well. Licorice has that effect in the brain as well. Okay. So why wouldn't you just use magnesium, Steve? You can use magnesium. But, but yeah, would in. there be more benefits for, with using licorice? Yeah, it does because it has another regulatory effect on the on the sodium potassium pumps as ah, well. Okay. Yeah. And this is why if you take too much licorice, you can get low potassium. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's an aldosterone-like effect. Right. So that, that's way too much and that's, you know, hopefully you're not drinking a whole bottle, although it does taste bloody good straight out of the bottle, licorice. Does it? Oh. I've never had it. When I was, um, I mean, I, I love licorice, like the licorice lolly. Like, yeah. I love it. And not the molasses fake one. I'm talking the yeah. real licorice. It's got a beautiful taste because it, it's, I don't know, when, when I was in, when I was doing a training in herbal medicine in 1995, um, we, we were tasting some of the herbs, just some of the more weird ones and disgusting ones like straight, Ginger and stru- it was like, uh, you know, people, oh, I like ginger, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but when you got to the licorice part, it was pure licorice uh, in a bit of alcohol. Yeah. It tasted beautiful. Yeah. It's the only alcoholic drink I like. Yeah, right. I could have drunk like more of that. Right. Uh, you know, it's very strong and very mm. pungent. It's got that alcoholic taste, but mm. it's beautiful. Mm. Oh, the flavor. And we used to add a little bit. Sometimes we'd, we'd, we'd make up 200 mils of um, herbs and there's always a little bit at the top. You just tip a little bit of licorice in there. Yeah. Just to make the whole bottle taste better. Yeah, nice. Oh, it's great. But very, very good for the brain. And uh, it's also, and I'll quote the study here, a, a strong neuroprotective agent that could possibly become a potent drug for Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease. Why does and it have Parkinson's? to become a potent drug, Steve? Yes. Why, why doesn't it just, That's I'm oh, let's it. make squillions of dollars and screw around with the million. And this is just, okay, now you've got yeah. side effects. Yeah. Now you've got the pipe. Why don't you just let nature freaking know best? Because uh, you know why? Because you can't patent it. Yeah, I know. Because you can't make squillions of dollars out of it. Yeah, and then I you know. can't create some problems with some side effects and then sell oh, some man. other medication to I it. Know. I, I know. I mean, you can I tell I'm you. a little bit cynical, right? A little now. bit. Right. Yeah. Marginally. But hey, hey, I oh. mean, I've probably got good reason. You've got very good reason. Okay, I've got a, a biggie. And I'll, I won't speak too much on this one because everybody knows about it, but ginkgo biloba. Yeah, ginkgo. Yeah. Ginkgo is yep. great. Cool. Resume for this, it, it has proven, or GB, which is the specific extract of it, has proven to treat uh, cognitive disorders, memory impairment, Alzheimer's disease, coronary heart disease, oh. and show therapeutic effects of um, things like stroke and um, any sorts of other um, bad sort of brain disease that goes on these, all the other ones, ischemia and all that sort of stuff. But ischemia, yeah. Yeah, there's lack of blood flow. Yeah. So it's very good for boosting blood flow. Now, it works in different ways again. So you can. this is synergistic. It, it's an antioxidant. So it, it protects against the breakdown of nitric oxide, so you get vasodilation mm-hmm. from it, which is good. And it also gets rid of beta amyloid plaques out of the brain. Wow. So it de-plaques your brain. And this is, again, specifically for people, and I know there can be other environmental yep. areas, but specifically people for Steve that that do not get enough sleep. Yeah. Would you recommend that this would be beneficial for people that maybe have cut the midnight oil, yep. you know? It, it's too. a good one to protect the brain. Yeah. Because you've got to remember when, when you don't sleep, lots of things happen, but free radicals increase. Yeah. So you need antioxidants yeah. or you need sleep. So I was watching this um, little short from Joe Rogan's podcast um, oh, yeah. and it was talking about sleep and the, and the guy's going, so do you know the percentage of the population? I haven't watched the whole thing yet, so I'm going to have to watch it. But he goes, do you know the percentage of the population that can survive adequately on six hours sleep without negative side effects? And Joe goes, how many? And he goes, Zero. Zero. Yeah. And it's funny because I talk to people all the time. And look, I do push it. I do push it because I'm, I'm, I'm a night owl. Yeah. Um, and I like staying up. I love the peace and the quiet. And I just love being alone and doing my own thing. I think a lot at night as well yeah. too. But of course, it doesn't help when you have to get up at 5.30 in the morning to get yeah. kids to school, right? So, <laughs> so, that. so uh, yeah. So a lot kids. of the times, yeah. How tall is Clayton now? Too tall. He's like Jack and the Beanstalk, and he's the Beanstalk. What size shoes you told me? Yes, after 16. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
It's just nuts. But and, 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 yeah, but my, yeah, and all of my family are good sleepers, actually. They go to bed early. And so I'm up, but yeah, but sleep, yeah. sleep, sleep is, yeah. is underrated. But this could, and not that it's an excuse not to sleep enough, because, and according to the research that's starting to come out, if you're getting less than seven hours mm. sleep, you're doing yourself damage. Seven, seven and a half is pretty optimal. I, th- I honestly feel, and again, I know that people are different and slightly different, but I think seven's your minimum. I mm-hmm. think probably targeting that eight should be what you go for. But you know what, Steve? We should probably do some research on that and actually really drill down into some meta-analysis on yep. disease states and length of sleep because that would be really interesting. Oh, there's massive, there's so much research on that. And, and everyone dismisses sleep. Mm. If everyone thinks it's a passive thing, well, they used to think you know, they used to go. Well, we don't really know what it's for. And yeah. then that 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 podcast we did, where you're talking about the glial, I always uh, have trouble saying the lymphatic right. system. Lymphatic system, right? not the lymphatic, not the, the lymphatic, lymphatic. Lymphatic, lymphatic system. Uh, and those brains and the detoxification, yeah. yep. you know, it's just critical, right? Well, it was only discovered ten years ago. Yeah. So you know, we, we sleep is a big mystery. It's got all these phases, which is weird. It is weird. You know, you Growth think it's hormone, should, yeah. hormone production, you know, all sorts of things. REM and non-REM. And we know that certain things are turning on and turning off at night, like, you know, different, you know, gallbladder and all, all sorts of weird oh, stuff's happening, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And apparently you should be sleeping on your left side if you're a side sleeper because that's um, – and it's funny because I was reading something and I said, oh, that's what the Prophet Muhammad said. And I was like, oh, well, it's wisdom, right? So oh. it's, it's sleeping on the left side. But a lot of ancient wisdom and, and, and things learned about – about these sorts of things. Just but, seeing um, which side I sleep on. Um, Beck, Beck is on my left side, so I don't cuddle her, so, so I sleep on my right side. <laughs> oh, right, you should. They said, well, then put Beck, Beck on the other side of the bed and sleep on your left side. <laughs> I've got a funny story. You want, you want to know why I buzz that side of the bed? Because oh. I had a heel injury and oh. I put my heel just off there so the heel would, would, would not put oh. pressure And on. you got used to sleeping on that side of the bed? Yeah. It's um I always sleep on that side of the bed because as Tony says, it's closest to the door and if there's robbers, she's gonna push me out in front and run. Oh. So yeah, if there's burglars that come in the middle of the night. Beck's closer to the burglars in my place. Is she? Yeah, so that's fine. That's good. So I want to <laughs> Yeah. That's why you got a young wife so that you could hobble away in your Zimmer frame <laughs> while they were attacking your wife. You're a horrible person, Ten Steve. Years younger than me. Um all right. What uh, else, Steve? What about uh, what about Hooper's Inc.? Because I mean, no. and it's so funny because what yeah, what that's, are you laughing that's for? That's coming up. Okay. But that's all right, we'll talk about now. Hooper's Inc. Yeah, because I mean everyone says, yeah. Oh, Hooper's Inc. Hey, is the best yeah. thing since sliced bread. Look, I don't mind Hooper's Inc., yeah. but I don't think it's all that's cracked up to be. But but I could be wrong, Steve. So you tell me. 25 years ago, there was lots of studies on it for the treatment of Alzheimer's uh-huh. uh, and increased acetylcholine by inhibiting the breakdown. Yep. So it's an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. Right. Which, you know, I know it's a few of the other herbs like Cotacola, but this is a good one too. Yeah. It is a goodie. Yep. Um, so it does but people work. are taking it more for the nootropic feel yeah. about being a gamer and being more yep. on the edge and they're saying that Hoopazine is the absolute best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Hoopazine, but yeah. is it is it the, is it like one of, is it the top, Steve? Is it? Is it's, it? It's top five. Okay. Be- because remember, it inhibits the breakdown of acetylcholine, yep. Panax boosts yep. uh, choline levels in the brain, yep. ginkgo increases circulation, Brahma we're going to talk about in a sec, uh, and uh, you've got um, the the minerals sorted by by licorice. So you've got, you see this synergy happening? <laughs> oh, totally. And look, as far as MPD is concerned, I love this kind of stuff. Yeah. We've got some formulations around that we would love to do one day, yeah. combining some of these things. We don't yeah. have it at the moment, but these are the sorts of things, Steve, where it's about the right ratios, selecting the right plants, yep. and then delivering them in a way that's effective. But yeah, they're pretty cool. So they're I can see Cool scenes there as well. Yep, absolutely. I've um, got another one um, that you may have heard of called Hypericum or St. Yes. John's Wort. Yes. Which, which what, what now, do people know it as? Well, yeah, so St. John's Wort. Now, um, that that you have to be careful with St. John's Wort, similar to uh, grapefruit, because it mm. definitely has been proven to have a lot of drug interactions. It does. About so, 60% of drugs react with, hyper, with Hypericum. So if you're listening to this podcast, yeah. um, and again, we're not recommending any product per se, but we're talking about individual ingredients here. Definitely, definitely, definitely go and have a chat to your healthcare professional, specifically I'd say your pharmacist, um, if you are on medication and considering taking St. John's Wort or Hypericum. Yeah, or any other so, herb, yeah. yeah. Um, simply because this speeds up the detoxification path. Phase liver. Well, two? it's phase, phase one, phase cytoc- one. cytochrome P450-304, right. which is one of the phase ones. Right. But that's the one that most drugs are detoxified down. Right, right. So you're going to actually detoxify your drugs quicker. Right. Everyone goes, oh, that's good. And so <laughs> you might need them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So so you it can make essentially make your drugs ineffective. Yeah, right. So you've got to be careful of that. As opposed to grapefruit, which would do the opposite. Opposite. 
It makes it more effective. What if you take St. John's wort and grapefruit at the same time then? <laughs> uh, if, if, if you could magically figure out the doses that it would cancel each other out. There you go. It would absolutely cancel. But, but gee, don't, yeah, don't try don't, 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 don't try that, no. Um, so... But, but St. John's will detoxify it. So let's say, you know... Um, whereas whereas uh, grapefruit preserves the half-life, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, funny, right? So if you're taking a beta blocker or anti is something to reduce your blood pressure, yep. and you take uh, St. John's. St. John's wort, the blood yep. pressure will probably go up because you'll detoxify the drug. But if you're on grapefruit, the drug will become more potent and the blood pressure... You could overdose. Drop. Yes, overdose. that's right. You're, you're, you're taking the correct dose... So let's say you're taking a high dose of propanolol, which is a beta blocker. Uh, that's a common antihypertensive drug. It's funny, it was, it was released in 1970 and Doug was one of the first doctors to prescribe it there in Sydney Hospital. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, um, if, if you take a standard dose of that, it could become toxic and you just simply pass out and fall down the stairs or right. something. Just not enough blood to the brain. Right. Because you need blood pressure to get it through your brain because it's heart's here and you've got to go uphill. So, yeah, so that's the problem with it. Okay. So be careful of that one. But it's a very good one, antifungal, anti so it stops clots. Yeah. It's antimicrobial, antioxidant, wow. and has antidepressant. It's actually classified as an SSRI. Does everyone right. know what that is? Yeah, so like the serotonin, serotonin re- reuptake re- inhibitor. inhibitor. So you get more serotonin in your brain. Mm. But you can see how clever that is. Yeah, very clever. So that's the hoopazine. Oh, no, that's, that's oh, the sorry, um, hypericum. The, the hypericum, sorry, St. John's Wort. And I've got, I got another one here, which is, which is like a serotonergic herb. It's, yeah. it's a pretty cheap herb called saffron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lovely, unbelievable, lovely. Yep. incredible. We did a podcast on saffron yeah. and saffronol. Yep, and uh, look, too expensive to actually be any worldly good, um, <laughs> but it is an incredible, an incredible, incredible, compound. and it's so, so many benefits. Oh. Well too, Steve, I, I, you can't. We, we'd be out of time before I went through them all. So I'm going to have a listen to the podcast. Listen yeah, to the podcast exactly. we did on saffronol. So if you're interested in saffronol, but Steve, really, just quickly, just give us the. Absolute highlights of saffronol. Boost serotonin, yep. boost beta endorphins, so you feel better, um, antioxidant, and anti carcinogenic. Yeah. Yep. So, isn't it beautiful that the side effects of these things that are good for your brain is it prevents cancer? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Nature knows best. It does. It's throwing drugs at everything, right? But as I said, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I wonder why. No, no, they, they really do have your best interests at heart, you know. Mm. Mm. There, there are, there is a, there's a few drugs that have anti cancer effects too, interestingly. Which ones? Um, aspirin is the classic one. Yeah, but isn't just aspirin taken from white willow bark? It is. Yeah, which is That's really just acid. just yeah, which yeah. is really just a herb. Yeah, you know, well, kind of. And, and and the second drug I was thinking of is also a herb which? from goat's root, um, which is metformin. Metformin, yeah. right? And that's potent anti carcinogenic. Damn, yeah, they're not really drugs, are they? No. Anyway, all right. So that's pretty good. All right, so so that's probably it for the for the herbs. There's, there's you've got pages of these bloody herbs. They go on forever, but I. Yeah. But those I, are the those are the picks. Yeah, the best star ones. picks. And Brahmi is the other one. Yeah, Brahmi, yeah. like ginkgo. Yeah. So it, a really really interesting herb. But, Horrible tasting too, isn't it? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's difficult to use that one. Probably the only other thing I want to like we've talked about food. We've talked about um, but but I really want to talk about polyphenols, which I'll slip into the herb category. Yeah, sure. Polyphenols work by increasing CERT1, which is a serolin 1, which activates three ways, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll sum, simplify it. It increases the microglia in the, in the, in the it increases circulation in the brain. Right. It increases blood flow in the brain. Yep. And also increases brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Wow. So it really grows, grows the brain back and blocks free radicals. Yeah, wow. Well. So it works on three ways. Really amazing ways. And, and again, polyphenols largely have been removed, yep. not extinct, but largely significantly reduced out of our modern diet. Yep. Uh, and again, think of think of natural, uh, healthy, you know, fruits, uh, seeds, mm. bitter compounds, um, bitter almonds. Um, you know, the, the thick skins. Mm. I, I, we speak about this, you yeah. know, all the time. You know, even chewing up and eating the seeds in your watermelons have got, you know, yeah. they've got polyphenol. People now we have seedless watermelons. Yeah. yeah. But but these are the sorts of things: the vinaigrettes and the and the salads and the the bitter, the kimchi and the mm. those sorts of things that are typically astringent and bitter mm. that we used to naturally gravitate towards have been removed from our diet. We don't eat that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's it's terrible. So so it's very look. It's good for your bowels and good for everything. Sure. Else too, and anti cancer and all that crap, but for the brain, it's very good. Yeah, 
very good for the brain. The only other, well, the other one thing you want to do for your brain, and, and you're going to uh, know this one, and everyone else is too listening, is exercise. Oh, yeah. There was an updated review, and it's called updated uh, overview of the interplay between physical exercise, neurotrophins, and cognitive functions in humans. And guess what sort of exercise? And they've 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 got it now, which is best for your brain. Best for your brain. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> I'm always split, Steve, because you always, you always try and catch me out and go, it's running, Jeff. It's running because they give you the runnings, run as high and, uh, you, know, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I'm going to go wait, Steve. I'm going right. to go resistance training. Yeah. Well, they, they, they found that three months of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. I knew two, you were going to say you bastard. Two to three sessions per week <laughs> lasting not less than 30 minutes. So there's a prescription for He's you. He's a bastard. Yeah. You just all I the just time, right? You, you just keep coming back to you bloody telling everyone to go for a run or, and, a, or a cycle. And it says that it is regarded as an inexpensive and safe strategy, <laughs> yeah. running in this heat may not be, for boosting brain sure. drive neurotrophic factor release, thus preserving and restoring cognitive functions. Could we incorporate a brisk walk or a hill yeah. walk into that, Steve? If, if it's moderate activity, yeah. I'm thinking for our, our more elderly sort of people. Like me. Or the people that are really overweight. Yeah. Because a lot of people would use it, oh, well, I can't go for a run because I'm overweight and oh. my knees are no good. Well, well, that, that would certainly, if, if you're overweight and unhealthy, a um, light walk would be a moderate intensity for that individual. That's right, because yeah. it's based on your fitness level. Yeah. Like a light walk for an Olympic runner yeah. is not going to do jack It won't crap. do anything. Yeah. But whereas, yeah, you're right. So it comes down to you, where your level is. Don't let an excuse hold you back. You know, if you've got oh. bad knees and you're overweight, yeah. go for a 30-minute amble. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And oh. then as you can, increase, you know, don't go out and run a marathon day one. Well, I was but soft this morning I, and went for a swim because it was too damn hot. Soft bastard. But uh, that's God. that's exactly right, Steve-O. Yeah. Like you've, but yeah, I knew you were going to say it. And this is another reason why the left bloody ventricle of the heart and aerobic activity, you just keep coming up with your bull craps there. I don't like to run. But, oh, no, um, no, no. but no, I, I do agree with you, mate. And this is where cycling can obviously be beneficial yeah. as well too. A brisk walk. Hill walks are fantastic. Yep. Take the dog for a, for a walk up a hill. Well, you're on with dogs that legs are this long. Mate, he out pulls me. Really? Mate, he is literally, he is a sled dog in a in a, in a miniature wiener's body. <laughs> I kid you not. Can we say wiener on the podcast? We, we just did. Oh, okay. Yeah, but no, he is. He's, he's a miniature long-haired dash down. He's the cutest little thing you've he's ever seen gorgeous. in your life. But no, mate, when we go for a walk as a family, yeah. he just yells the entire time and literally nearly pulls my arm out of its socket. Now, you know, and they'd be, oh, you should train your dog. Well, try training a freaking dash hound. They're impossible. I know. Actually, I've we, taken- we used to have trained dogs. Like, yeah. we, I've, I've, we used to have, like, um, uh, Cocker Spaniels, yeah. you know, um, doing um, agility and, mm. and, 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 and fly ball Barney. and stuff like I that. Remember Barney. Yeah, that's Barney. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous. And, dog. mate, but no, this bloody dash hound. <laughs> well, anyway. I've taken the dash hound for a walk out the front of you, and he's, you, you remember, he just took off. <sighs> like, I had him on lead, but he was like, wee. Oh, yeah. You know, and so he was—he was loving life. But yeah, but as long as it's moderate activity, it doesn't. doesn't Go get a dash hound. They'll—they'll—they'll they'll, they'll pull your arm off. It's so, so cute, though, isn't he? But his legs are—I don't know—he does move around, though, doesn't he? Like he's chased me around the office. I'm, yeah, he's <laughs> funny. He's a funny dog. Very, I think I think the the way that he works is very aerodynamic. <laughs> yeah, he's very pointed, and yeah. you know. <laughs> well, so I showed a photo to Beck. And, you know, we've got a flat face cat. Of course, yeah. you've seen it. And and she goes, "Oh, it's cute, but it's got a very long face." And I said, "No, our cat's got a very flat face." That's right. Yeah, flat face. it's it's flat, flat face. Yeah. yeah, he's quite unique looking. Yeah. Uh, so that's the brain. Exercise, yeah. herbs, nutrition, yeah. diet, yeah. no sugars, bit fiber. more sleep. Well, yeah, very. I mean, again, yeah. Steve, the advice that we give keeps coming pretty much all back to the same thing: we eat know, well, sleep, yep. exercise. The brain is disconnected to the body. There's yeah. a thing called the neck ear, which you know means that they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. Get your bowels healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, get enough sleep, and and don't just go. Oh yeah, I'll try. You know, I remember when I was in practice, people go, "Oh yeah, I'll try and get more sleep." It's like, what does that mean? You try. What is it? There is no try. There is only do. Is it Bruce Lee that said that? Oh, there is no try. There is only do. I think it was Bruce Lee. I think it was Bruce Lee. Yeah, he's an old kung fu dude. Well, passed away now, but um, but from the seventies, I guess for the people who don't know, seventy six passed away. Did he? Mm. That long ago? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do I remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, seven. Yeah, I'm pretty Jesus. sure he was. See, twenty twenty eight. He was forget. quite young. Yeah, and his son Brandon passed away at 32. Anyway, yeah. uh, yes. Thank you, Steve. I. That's well, that one. was good. Uh, hopefully, there's some 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 cognitive dissidents out there. I like. Yes. So, yeah. Get get your uh, brain in order. Yeah, get your brain in order so you can fight the powers that be. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> don't believe, don't believe the, 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 and go and watch They Live. That, that'll, that'll help you to stay, ment- want to stay mentally alert so that yeah. you're not being propagandized to. Oh. All right. Thank you, Steve. No worries. We'll be back next week with some more. Absolutely. Steve Yes. It's time for some FAQs. Right. All righty. Um, my name is, oh, hang on. Here we go. <laughs> uh, my name is, my name is, my name is <laughs> Super Sim Slater. Okay, let's go. Three. Um, I'd love you to do a podcast on migraines, causes, triggers, and treatments, in particular hormone influences and increased uh, regularity with age. Um, yeah, good one. Yeah. I mean, migraines affects like 18%. Of the female population, about 6% of men. It's I, I, huge. I, I, I am so fortunate. I'm, I don't think I've ever had a migraine, and I think I've had a, head cut, a headache maybe, you know, a, a dozen times in my entire life. Yeah, so, that's great. But I, I can imagine that it would be absolutely horrendous. Well, we, you know, we talked about cluster headaches a, a couple of months ago, I think, as being. People didn't believe me. I was, I was talking about that, and they're going, surely, you know, childbirth has got to be worse. No. No, scientifically proven. Well, Cluster pe- headaches are worse. People commit suicide. Yes, they're called the suicide headache. Yeah, and, you know, and Antonio was going to. Be, yeah, but 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 that's a negative with no positive on the outside. She goes, when you have a baby, you feel like you're dying, but you know that you're going to have a baby. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's a good point. Yep. And so, but I said, but what about people who don't want a baby who are having it? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, whoops. You know, but that's true. Um, you know, so I said, you can't use that argument because this was a meta-analysis and they rated the pain slightly less than than uh, gallstones. Was it gallstones? No, um, Gals- kidney stones. Yeah. Kidney stones. Yeah, they're, they're, kidney they're stones. up there too. Yeah, yeah. but um, still, I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was like 7.2 for yeah. having a baby and yeah. like 7.4 or 7.3 yeah, for having kidney sevens, stones, yeah. uh, whereas the Cluster headaches were like was nine, It was yeah. 9.7. Yeah. And you got to remember that, that, that cluster headaches are – like, okay, let's say like, Tony's had two childbirths, you know, you, you know, she's given birth two kids, right? So, therefore, that's twice in her life. Class of headaches, you can have up to eight a day. So, um, the you, frequency is relatively yeah. obvious, right? And yeah. the, the fact that you don't know it's not going to end and all this yeah, sort of that's stuff. Yeah, that's true. And my, they actually, very recently, if they've discovered chemicals and there's new treatments out there, even medical and natural treatments. That can, there's, there's a chemical that's identified called calcitonin gene-related peptide. Mm. I know, big word. And and that has been one of the key drivers. So now there's new drugs out that are injections, which are antibodies to that. But the natural medicine, there's wonderful things to reduce that chemical in the body. There you go. Yeah. Well, we, we like could definitely do a podcast on, ginger, on, on this as well too. I've heard ginger, yeah. Yeah. Which is good for pregnancy too. Um, yeah. All right, so... All right, well, that's another one as well, too. The triggers, the treatments, the causes, and that sort of stuff. Because we did talk about the pain scale. Maybe we should talk more about migraines because, uh, I mean, obviously so many people, I I bet everyone listening to this podcast either suffers from or has a close family member that suffers from. So that could be cool. Absolutely. Cool. And and look again, guys, um, uh, if you've got ideas for topics, podcasts, questions, whatever it happens to be, Mm -hmm. Steve is here to answer your question. Uh, we'd love to hear from you yep. and, and thanks guys please get in contact with the, the two people that have, have written in today um, please get in contact with our team just jump onto the live chat or info at atpscience.com we'd love to send you out a little thank you for, for writing in and that, it, that your um, question was read out on the podcast so yeah, yeah thanks very much good one alright good one Steve-O um, Steve-O yes Australian word for today hit me with your best yeah, yeah. Um, mate have you have you heard of um Rooted. Yes. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that, is that <laughs> depending, it can mean two things. It's kind of like tinny, right? I mean, it can mean a couple yes, of different it things. Can. But when our American friends hear the word, I'm going to root for my team. Oh, yeah. It's that's probably got, if you say that in Australia, it probably has a different It does have a right? different meaning. So, um, yeah, there's the kind of the English rooted, which is which is a bit naughty. Um, oh, and yeah. Then there's, and then there's rooted. Mate, yeah. that thing's rooted. Yeah. So if I said, mate, your car's rooted. Yes. What am I saying? Yeah, it's broken down. It's, broken. it's busted. It's no good. I was rooted after my swim this morning. That's that, how I was because I went for a swim this morning. It had been a while. Yeah. And it's like, oh, boy. And I was rooted after the swim. So it's funny, isn't it? You, you, we all speak English, but we, we yeah. don't all speak English. And it had nothing to do with Beck or anything like no, that. No, no, nothing no, no, no. Of, just well, that's clear. called the English, isn't it? I mean, yes. rooted and that. And, we, you know, you know, it's kind of more of an 80s terminology to use it for the that yeah, intimacy, and and you <laughs> might, very, very you, you rude, might right? have to cut this bit out. But 
having a root in Australia yeah. is yeah, that's the different. way you use it. Yes, the, no, but we don't say that, Steve. No, that's, no, it's never. Um, but yes, but saying, oh, mate, that thing's rooted. Rooted, yes. Yeah. That, no that's good. very common English yeah. or yeah. Australian, Australian, I should say. English, yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. English. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good one. All right. Um, I've got another one for oh, you, yeah. Steve. And this is an interesting – actually, it's funny. When I was in the States, I was talking to some some people, and they just cracked up every time I said, oh, no worries, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no worries, yeah. right? No, no, no drama, yeah. no problems, no wackers. No, no but, worries. Which I don't say no wackers. I mean, yeah. it's kind of more low circuit. That, but, that is but, lower, But yeah. that all means – not a problem at all. Not a problem at no, all. No, no, that's, that's fine. But the one I wanted to go for right. was booze bus. Because people are oh, like, what's a bus? booze bus? Don't people, that, that's, no, that's only Australia. Australia. Well, maybe Aussie and New Zealand, but yeah, booze bus. Wow. So Steve, I said, watch out for the booze bus. Yeah. People will probably go, what, what is this? Uh? A booze bus is like a roadside uh, breathalyzing and drug testing station. Yep. That's a, it's a, like the size of a bus. I've never been on one, by the way. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny, actually, because I watched the American... Uh, DUI, which oh, is yeah. driving under the influence, yeah. and they get them to like walk a straight line, yeah. and why don't they just breathalyze them? I do they have that? I mean, I'm sure they, they have that. Well, actually, there. I just got off the telephone call just then with with um, some some support, um, you know, industry support people out of Washington, right? And we we're just laughing how we receive checks from some of the American companies we do business with. It's like. Do they still do check? Yes, yes. So some companies still send a check in the mail. I have not seen a check for, a, and if I say 10 years, it could be more. Oh, I reckon 20 years. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've ever had a checkbook. I mean, and I'm nearly 50. So, yeah, you know, whereas Americans, yeah, I'll write you a check. It's like, what the? Yeah, I know. Whereas we use all EFT. Anyway, just funny yeah, difference yeah. between Australia and New Zealand and Just watch and out England. for the booze bus. Yeah, watch out for the booze bus. Oh, that's either. funny. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was just like a... Ah, okay. No. All right. There you go. No. See, I, I, you know, I'm a bit insular because I just live in Australia and don't travel that much. No. Especially after COVID. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. 